come back Your dreams were your ticket I Welcome back To that same old place that you laughed uh, but it was from Welcome Back, Cotter, a TV show in the 70s and early 80s. And uh, we thought it was appropriate to welcome you all back to OMARAC in OMARAC 2023. And uh, this is the agenda. So I'm Lee Simon. I'm chair of this particular meeting. Our tradition is uh, that whoever is in the country where we hold it, uh, the member of OMARAC in the uh, leadership core, uh, tends to be the chair of the meeting, so I'm your host. And uh, we're beginning, I see, 3 p.m., welcome to OMRAC 2023. Then after this session will be a session on patient engagement. This is very important. This whole key issue is these connections and communication. And what happens at the 4 o'clock session will feed into our tomorrow morning 8 o'clock session, which will be astoundingly entertaining for you all and for us who planned it. And then at 5 p.m. this evening are the special interest group sessions. So we, the management group, are welcoming you here. As you can see, our very good pictures that we show up. We actually, at one point, did professional pictures. I don't know if these are those. Um, so Peter Tugwell and Dorcas Beaton and Phil Conahan, and I know Catherine Hofstetter and myself. And uh, so this is your management group, and uh, fundamentally we make decisions about money and about plans and things like that. Uh, we have 157 registrants this year, 18 patients, 18 fellows, seven emerging leaders, 24 new attendings. It's always good to have 24 people now coming who have not been here before. We're celebrating our 30th anniversary, and we thought maybe it was about time to have a mission statement that actually reflected what we do after these 30 years. And so this is our mission statement. Uh, we are a global, volunteer-driven, I cannot even emphasize how important that part is, volunteer-driven, not-for-profit organization, committed to improving outcomes for patients with autoimmune and musculoskeletal diseases through advancing the design and quality of clinical studies. For some reason, for those of you that have been in OMRAC for a long time, this was not understood by some people coming in, or people that we spoke to about funding and people who we spoke to about what we do. Through rigorous methodology in our global working groups, OMRAC supports the development of core outcome sets, identifying patient and disease relevant areas to be measured or domains, for those of you cognoscenti, and the corresponding measurement instruments for use in clinical trials, including those for regulatory approval of new treatments or therapies. Now, in addition, we thought we're in a different time 30 years later, and we're sophisticated, and instead of having a hierarchical experience uh, where we'd have a management group and then different other groups below that in an organizational way, we thought our structure should be far more cooperative. And this is our new diagram, our consort diagram, you know, for those of you that do that kind of work, uh, where we are demonstrating how we are going to interact. And <coughs> you'll notice top on the top right, excuse me, patient research partner support team. You're going to hear more about that in a minute. This is really the center of what we do in the work that we develop. Without the patients, we would not be here. And then on the other side is the technical advisory group, the handbook, and education and training. And in the last two years, perhaps due to the pandemic, perhaps due to having nothing to do because we weren't going to hold a meeting, we actually got the wherewithal together, and we have all these educational materials now that have been developed, and they're, I must admit, they're pretty good and pretty professional. So we've entitled that effort methodology. Again, the management group in the middle, and operations are down here on the left, and that's all you guys, the working groups, conferences, strategic advisory uh, group, and secretariat. We had, for years, a strategic advisory 
experience um, and had meetings of them at ULAR or ACR, and we really didn't really interact with them very successfully. And I think that we've now created a group of people that have a lot of OMARAC experience and can actually bring us along, and the management group, because we're gonna be confronting all kinds of different issues, one of which is a discussion of what the next OMARAC meeting will look like and where it'll be, and how many days it'll be, and all the accoutrements associated with what this meeting would be. And we're looking forward to hearing about what the strategic advisory guys, what are they thinking about in that regard. And, and it's not to minimize it, is the Business Advisory Committee. And the Business Advisory Committee <coughs> is the one that interacts with our industry colleagues on a regular basis to keep them up to date and to talk to them about the importance of continuing to support us so that this august group of people could get together and actually do this kind of work. Uh, I'm gonna ask the, my co-chair, I'm one of the co-chairs of it. Deepika, would you stand up, please? Uh, you're co-chair of the BAC. And let me just say over the, I guess since when I first started, <laughs> that thank you was really deserved. She has a, ha, had a yeoman's task in putting this all together, and she really does a great job at this and is the predominant person who has made actually Overmarack be able to function uh, from a financial point of view. So thank you. Okay, so what do we have new? We have a couple things new. We have e-learning, which is a, Peter Brooks, some of you may remember, was very involved in management years ago. And one of his greatest goals was to have an OMARAC university. And uh, the, you, know, you have no idea how much this was his goal. And we actually have created such a thing, and it's actually coming along very well. Uh, we have uh, OMARAC 2023 app, and we're gonna go to that because we're gonna do a polling session. All of our polling is gonna be done on the app. We'll go back in case you haven't done it, but you might as well make the effort to pull out your your cell phones so that you can be ready when we do this polling test. Uh, we have hybrid SIG sessions. We had a lot of debate about that. And obviously many of you have people who have worked very hard in your groups over the years and they would like to participate but they couldn't come. And part of the discussion we have to have at some stage is costs and finances of getting people to these various different meetings. Uh, and talking about shorter conferences, less days involved, which then decreases cost, but then raises other issues. How many SIGs can we have? SIGs are important. They're important for succession planning, for new people to come in. I remind you, OMARAC is an umbrella organization. It is the bottom up. It is the SIGs that develop the work, and that goes through the stages to be able to do a workshop and actually then get done for voting and et cetera, um, but it's the SIGs that are the heart blood of the actual work that gets done, and you guys are that heart, heart blood. And we actually have meet and greets in various different ways within the meeting. Uh, the business advisory group, uh, I must say, those of you in the room that are from our industry partners, uh, we are incredibly grateful that you're A, here at the meeting, uh, and B, that you actually are helping to collaborate with us, because that's how we see this. It is a collaboration with you and us doing the work that we do, and I thank AbbVie, AstraZeneca, GSK, Janssen, J&J, &J, and Novartis for being at the platinum level, uh, and BMS, or Bristol-Myers Squibb, Horizon, and Pfizer at the gold level, uh, and Arrhenius and Trexion and Sparrow as the level two, because we want people even when they're too early, they don't yet have a drug or a therapeutic, and we want them to be involved early, as early as they possibly can, so we try to really foster the sense of participation. And I remind you, um, we don't identify people as being industry versus academic versus schmoes like me. Fundamentally, everybody's equal here in OMRAC. Fellows, everybody's the same. Patients, of course, have an upper level because they're so important, but in the end, we are very egalitarian. Thank you so much. And it's my honor and privilege to serve as chair of the PRP support team. 
and uh, to chair this meeting with our new PRPs that are here today for the first time. Um, I'd like to introduce to you our support team. We're a little thin today. We're very small, but we're very mighty. Um, we're missing a couple of people. Uh, Tom Buttle, for the, first of all, he has worked with us for the last two and a half years, helping to develop the resources that we put on the PRP website. And a month ago, he decided to step down because his work commitments were making it such that he couldn't participate anymore. So we have thanked him, and he is on call when he retires in a few years. So, um, Secondly, Ingrid DeGroat is not here this afternoon. She is having a really tough day today, but she's doing better this afternoon, so she'll be with us, I'm hoping, tomorrow morning. With us today, aside from myself, is Mary Cowern. Mary, stand up. And with us as well is George Casey. And I'm hoping that we have made, I hope that we've made this look easy, but it's not. It is a ton of work. And this team has been incredibly supportive. And they're there anytime I call, anytime I email. They've been wonderful. What I would ask is that the Omer Act PRP class of 23, please stand up so we can see you. They're quite a feisty lot, let me tell you. <laughs> so thanks, and on behalf of my co-chairs of the technical advisory group, George Wells and Bing Bingham, who are out here, we wanted to just take a moment to express our thanks to a group of very hardworking OMR actors. And this is your technical advisory group, where we call them the TAG. So if the TAG members who are present could please stand, that would be wonderful. And this is... <laughs> So this is a group of really hardworking people. They review your protocols. They reduce barriers in some of our processes and our methods. They help us with communication tools that we're setting up or reviewing our teaching tools. And they just help us develop new methods or even give reinforce that we're doing things OK in our core outcome set development. So we're really appreciative of all the time and effort that goes in. We meet with them every month, but a lot of the work goes on in between our meetings. So thank you very much, and a big shout out to them again to just say thanks for your time and your commitment to OMRACT. Many years ago, at the beginning of all this, we didn't have a tag. It was kind of like a catch-as-catch-can advisory group. And if you could get somebody from, you know, somebody who's had experience, but by actually elaborating an organization or part of the organization that is dedicated to ensuring that we do rigorous work it really causes us to be seen from the outside world as very serious scientists at what we do. And so the TAG provides enormous credibility uh, for the work that we do. And this is the work that we do. And this is you. This is all of you, some of whom are here, some of whom are not. And you can imagine our meeting would go for like a month if we had everybody here. And this is a problem, but at the same time, it's a wonderful opportunity. We have plenty going on. We have plenty of working groups for the, our industry partners. Just take your choice about what you want to be involved in. Uh, take your choice about what you might want to help to support financially to get it even done faster. We're doing all kinds of cool stuff. And as a result, the, it's a panoply. It is like going to a delicatessen and having choices up the wazoo of different kinds of roast beef if you eat roast beef. It's really terrific. And here is our fellows programs chairs, and that I'm going to ask them to stand too, because this is hard work. They want to develop a program that's going to allow the fellows to become engaged and understand what's going on. So Lynn, Mata, and Francis, if you could stand up, thank you very much for your incredibly hard work. Mata, get up. Get, get up. Thank you very much. And here are the fellows that we're incredibly happy that you're here and that you're working with us. Uh, you know, the reality is that this is um, a great opportunity and we see you as our colleagues. So this is great. And here is our Emerging Leaders Program Chairs. 
Bethan Richards and Peter Tugwell. Many of you know Peter. Maybe not everybody knows Bethan. So Bethan, could you stand up, please? And Peter. <laughs> we, you know, that we would hear things back. You know, we actually do listen. I know it's hard to believe. And we actually read the reports that you all write at the end of the meeting about what happened. And people who were new to OMRAC and people who were young and not really involved, uh, they felt like they really couldn't really grasp what was going on and didn't really know where to go and what, what for them to do. And the emerging leaders are a critical component of our future because that's the secession. Who's going to take over? I mean, I'm not doing this when I'm 90 years old, and that's not that far away. Okay, here are the emerging leaders as they are here. I'd like them to stand up. All of you who are identified as emerging leaders, please. Outstanding. <laughs> One of you is going to be up here in the not too distant future doing this. And then the newbies program, and I already alluded to it. And you know, these are the guys that have to be indoctrinated, so to speak into what's gonna happen in these various different sessions. And you know, many of you go to meetings and you sit in this big meeting room and you hear somebody lecture to you and you, you don't really wanna go to the microphone and you, know, you don't wanna challenge them or anything. If you don't do this here, you're going to actually lose out. We expect you to go to the microphone. We expect you to be interactive. We expect you to go to your study sec your, your working group sessions. We expect you to be cooperative but at the same time, discussing. This is an interactive meeting. This is not a passive meeting at all. So I'd like to have Bev and George, George Wells and Bev Shea to stand up. Right, guys, let's see. There you are. Sitting together and still planning, huh? Okay, and here are our newbies. These are the people that haven't been here before. And uh, I can see from outside some of the bags still aren't picked up. I checked them before I came in to the meeting. So I I'm going to not really have you guys stand up. There are a lot of you. But it is a really important component of us. And if you have any questions at all, don't hesitate to grab anybody uh, that seems to know what they're doing or where they're going. And otherwise, if you want to be sure, take anybody from up here at this front table uh, or any of the pictures you've seen and ask them and therefore they can help you with that. So a bird's eye view of OMRAC from the beginning in the rain. <laughs> So we're really here to uh, celebrate uh, 30 years uh, and also now it's an important time to look forward. So could I have the next slide, please? So we sent out a survey to uh, all of you and to many others, and over 300 people replied, and we said, should we close down OMRACT? The resounding response was, no, keep going. Well, okay, we're going to do so. And so the things that we're really working on is how to capitalize on the COVID experience of the virtual meetings, how to capitalize on these very uh, impressive e-learning modules uh, that are really, I think, is the way of the future and the basis for the uh, new educational programs, to really focus on the next generation within the, with the Emerging Leaders and Fellows program, and also to uh, revise the structure so that it reflects the mission. 
So the strategic advisory group are being tasked with taking the survey and identifying short-term and long-term priorities. About 40 recommendations were made, were made, and we will be working with them, and we were presenting the results of that at the meeting at ACR. Come and have a nice break. Thank you.